it's me Haru, and today I have a little theory slash what if scenario I'd like to share. But before we get into that, I want to briefly explain how I came up with this idea in the first place. It started while I was searching through the Spyro Wiki trying to come up with new topics for videos, and I happened to land on one of the pages for Dark Spyro. I then thought to myself, why don't I make a video explaining the entire history of Dark Spyro? That's not what I'm going to talk about now, but maybe it will be somewhere down the road. Anyway, from there, I then started looking over Dark Cinder's page. You know, that form Malifor turned her into for a few seconds at the end of Dawn of the Dragon? I made a post asking my audience if they think we should have seen more of her, because honestly, I really like the general idea behind it. The concept of evil counterparts has always fascinated me, whether it be a physical manifestation of a character's inner demon, a mirror world version of them, or a straight up evil twin or duplicate. The mechanics behind the dark versions of Spyro and Cinder are hard to nail down. In Legend, it ranges from a super-powered evil side to an enemy-within sort of deal. And then we have Skylander's Academy, in which Spyro's dark half is created after he's stripped of all his light energy. What I can say for certain is a trope like this works incredibly well with characters who are dealing with anxiety, have a fear of facing their past, or are struggling to do the right thing. That's why it was such a good fit for Cinder. However, there is another character whom this concept can also apply to. And you know who that is. Ah, Bianca. When will I ever stop talking about her? Probably never, because she's very important to me, so get off my back. Anyway, back to my point. A while ago, someone brought up the idea that Bianca could have been a potential boss battle in Spyro 3, to which I responded that probably wouldn't have worked. Not only was she easily scared off in a cutscene with a flame to the butt, and eaten by her own monster, GET IN MY BELLY! But she had no interest in killing Spyro. Sure, she was just following orders, but it wouldn't have made any sense for her to take matters into her own hands. That's who the sorceress was, not her. And as we know, post-Year of the Dragon, Bianca became a mainstay protagonist. So the only way we could see her as a boss is if she somehow turned evil again. And that got me thinking, maybe that's not such an impossibility. While it does seem Bianca gained a certain amount of confidence after joining Spyro, at least in the original, I don't believe she's fully forgiven herself for her past actions. The basis for my claim? This exchange at the beginning of Shadow Legacy. As she explains that the Elder's magic is very powerful and potentially dangerous, Hunter chimes in with, Sounds like the little bunny learned a few tricks from the sorceress back in the day. Prompting her to snap back with, that's none of your business. Granted, I'm not sure why Hunter's being a dick and teasing her about something she's clearly not comfortable discussing, but I think this is noteworthy because, to my knowledge, it's one of the only times the Sorceress is brought up after her defeat, the other time being in Season of Ice, in which it was revealed that Bianca was still in possession of the spellbook she'd received. <laughs> <laughs> That's Burlap Bunny. This story stink. It's unknown if she ever got it back after it was stolen by Grendor. However, provided that Reignited takes the classic series in a whole new direction and she doesn't lose it along the way, we can assume Bianca might still have the book for the purpose of studying it, learning how to better control her magic and increase both her power and potential. As I explained in my mini-analysis of the Sorceress, the way Reignited chose to portray her was actually quite terrifying when you think about it. She had all the makings of an abusive parental figure, and that must have weighed very heavily on Bianca. Now, this theory I have can go one of two ways. Taking into consideration everything we know about her story and personality, I can imagine that, in her determination to prove useful to her friends, the advanced magic in the spellbook would ultimately be too much for her to handle and would corrupt her, thus creating Dark Bianca. The other way this could happen is, of course, through direct brainwashing by another character, aka what Malifor did to Cinder. Who would be best suited to do something like that? Well, my guess would be someone like the Sorcerer, again from Shadow Legacy. Not necessarily because he's basically a male version of the Sorceress, but because he did succeed in capturing Bianca due to his superior magic overpowering hers. Just put a spin on it to where she ends up under his control instead. So why all this speculation? Well, to put it simply, I think this would make for a far more satisfying conclusion to Bianca's character arc in the new timeline that's presumably been set by Reignited. And while I don't really have anything to go on regarding just how much focus will be put on her, if at all, in the upcoming titles, it's nice to theorize about just what could happen if she was given that kind of arc somewhere down the line. Though I assume most of you would rather that attention go to other characters, like a certain fawn. 
That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think of this theory in the comments below. Huge thanks to Hysteric Animations for editing this video. He's currently uploading all of Spyro 3 in glorious 60fps, so go check that out on his channel, 60fps gaming. As always, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on all my social medias, and I will see you next time. Until then, this is Miharu, signing off.